Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the military map review. And we have good news coming from Izum direction. Ukrainian army was able to push Russians more to the north part, to Izum city itself. Why it happened? Because basically Russia moved their forces away from Izum to Kharkiv direction. Kharkiv is over here my friends they won't however to attack Kharkiv in nearby future and here we were able to free those villages of Dmitrivka, uh, Dibrivne and Pogorodichne city which is very important for Ukrainian forces now let's go to the timeline I want to show you so before it was like that we took Dmitrivka then we took um, this part of the land and the fighting wasn't going for Pasika and little by little we are on our counter-attack it happened not on Kherson direction it happened in Izum really awesome my friends to see that we able to get this part of the land we have our ruler tool here and i just want to measure the distance almost eight kilometers we pushed russians however this is so-called gray area over here the fighting is ongoing between russian forces and ukrainians on this territory and how far are we from izum city itself 17 kilometers to go quite far away but still we can reach izum city with our rocket artillery systems and standard artillery systems guys what can i say i'm really surprised that we were able to go to izum direction i didn't expect it um, but still little by little we are getting getting our ground back for Ukraine and this is Bahorodishna city that was actually taken mostly by Russian forces they were able to go from the Svetlandarsk uh, through the bridge and now they totally went out from the city it's the good success for Ukrainian army by the way my friends we also have the sponsor for today's video the sponsor for today's video is Atlas VPN what it basically does is that it encrypts my data and all of my devices are out of reach by government by annoying ads and also hackers it is very important for me because once my aviation channel pilot blog was hacked then I used the public Wi-Fi here with Atlas VPN you have warnings if someone would try to reach your device so then I got those warnings I usually cancel the Wi-Fi connection and yes as you probably know I'm the airline pilot and before this war I used to travel a lot and then you went to the countries where the fiber is blocked for example United Arab Emirates you cannot call from Viber but using the Atlas VPN I may change my virtual location and may call from any kind of country as well as Netflix some of the content is not available for some of the countries so using Atlas VPN may open you new borders for the streaming services as Netflix and by changing your virtual location on Atlas VPN you may purchase the airline ticket with great discount as well as booking apartments for your holidays somewhere I highly recommend you to check out the link in the video description just below where you can have the three years offer for just 183 per month and that is how you can get 83% of discount and together with three months for free this is limited offer available for my personal link so go ahead and grab it my friends this product is really awesome my friend sponsorship helps me a lot to support ukrainian people all the funds that i got from them i sent for charity purposes so thank you very much for supporting me as well a couple of the words about this place and why is it so important my friends basically we have the major crossroad over here and you can go westbound to this direction and you can go southbound to slavansk so russia tried to attack the lina village over here however we got the defense lines there and they are unable now to um, go through our defense lines on the way to slavansk so the only way they can reach slavansk nowadays is liman direction obviously we have also natural obstacle over here uh, we have uh, huge water storages and uh, the only way as i said for them is to cross this river but actually there are some of the bridges that are being uh, mined by ukrainian forces and also we aimed our artillery on those bridges so uh, there is no any way uh, what i see that they will reach uh, 
Slavans city in nearby future with all the resources they have and I think they exhausted because they basically withdraw from this part it's also my friends to see that however they are very close to Bakhmut city six kilometers away from that city border it's not good my friends because Bakhmut is as important as Izum but for the eastern side of Ukraine because it's the main crossroad over here and if they reach it they can go here southbound and they can go uh, to Slavansk using this road there are not uh, many big uh, villages on the way so no great obstacles um, on the way to Slavon so probably they're gonna maybe their idea is to take uh, Bahmut and go to Slavansk from this direction simultaneously coming from Liman city as well so we don't know uh, for sure what to expect from Russians in the future but they continue to fight for Bakhmut and they use the private campaign uh, Cheveka Wagner to fight over here which is more effective compared to a Russian standard Russian army obviously they also wanted to get uh, Siversk under their control but so far unsuccessfully and also there are some natural obstacles that help Ukrainian army to withstand Russian aggression and let's go to the south my friends um, the south is more or less calm by the way I want to turn on the fire detection you can see there are lots of artillery fires not lots uh, but occasional artillery fires alongside the front lines and also we have some of the success near to Andreevka it was reported that Russia took Vesela uh, recently but we were able to take it uh, back so they took part of the of this village which is very near to Avdivka so they want to attack from this side they want to attack from the north side but actually we were able to throw them away to Kamenka village over here so good news coming from the front lines Marinka was partially taken by Russian forces as it was reported recently however we're still holding our main defense line in Marinka and as well as in Piski the fighting is ongoing for this kind of village it is also very important because uh, here we have the main road M30 which is ongoing all across the front lines and can lead you to Pokrovsk here. Uh, recently Zaporizhia was under attack. You can see uh, the fresh shells uh, on the city. It is the industrial part of the city and it was under attack by the Russian forces. They fired the rockets, long-range rockets uh, from Vasilovka village and nearby. And also we have an Ergodar city that we fired to that city, uh, to the Russian bases, but not touching the nuclear power plant, the largest one, one of the largest uh, nuclear power plants in the world, actually, and the largest in Eastern Europe. And also what we have here, well, there is no major change over here, my friends, and we do expect the massive Russian attack, as I told you before, and they probably concentrate the forces to reach Krivery uh, city. They want to take this one. And this is the hometown city for our president, President Zelensky. He was grown up there and he started his uh, comedian and artistic career in that city. All of his uh, friends uh, from his comedian genre uh, came from the same city as well. It is kind of industrial city and very near to the front lines however we are still holding uh with Sikapile in a half circle let's say we are controlling uh their forces the russian forces not to withdraw from the Sikapile, and we use artillery to cut their uh, way out from this place and i think in the future if russia wouldn't start their massive attack we're gonna get this village under our control but we do expect that russia may start their massive attack uh, in nearby days they will start it from a mikhailov direction they're gonna put their forces on this road again back to mikhailov they're gonna start attack to krivery to zaporizhia and also from to Kharkiv uh, from the north uh, direction that is why they're throwing their forces from Izum over there and they also want some peaceful negotiations with the Ukraine they want to secure their current state the lands that they took recently 
and uh, that's their main goal my friends they want actually to stop this war for a few years let's say collect more forces more soldiers and start this war again but from those controlled uh, russian controlled territories their major goal is to take all ukraine under their control they want to put puppet government in kiev they want basically to get the city under their control probably they wouldn't get the western side of ukraine under their control because there are few natural resources basically mountains forests but their main goal is to take our country basically they want us to be their slaves that is why we are fighting for our freedom my friends and still we have lots of politicians in the world who does not support the sanctions on russia so according to bloomberg analysis almost half of the g20 countries uh, do not support uh, those uh, sanctions as well as china they even increased the uh, supplies of the fossil fuels from russian side so those g7 countries they try to regulate supplies from russia reducing them they also put the sanctions on russian gold but some of those countries on the right they say like okay we can got some oil from russia but still it's just a matter of time my friends and then those countries will put their sanctions on russia as well because if the situation uh, escalates again um, there is no any way how can you tolerate the russian behavior barbarian behavior here in ukraine the main thing my friends that you support ukraine all across the world normal usual people support us ukrainians mostly and you know just recently i heard the interview of mexico's uh, president he said that uh, this uh, conflict in ukraine should be frozen like for five years at least so we need again peaceful negotiations with russia but if we will give russia what they want basically we're gonna lose it's not the peaceful negotiations it will be just betrayed from our side of our own people so that is why we need to continue fighting and we need more weapons that are coming mostly from those countries and obviously from australia european union uh, some of the weapons from turkey but basically those countries like india i think brazil uh, china indonesia they do not supply weaponry to uh, Ukraine and we have more ships coming to the supports and they deliver mostly nowadays corn from our ports so we have lots of corn growing here in Ukraine as well sunflowers corns uh, any kind of weeds uh, so those will be delivered uh, to the world countries all right China answered for the Pelosi's visit to Taiwan they put sanctions on nancy pelosi <laughs> that's the biggest thing they can probably do there <laughs> recently we got uh, the big scandal around the statement of uh, amnesty international and they stated that ukrainian forces used their weaponry in the cities mm, kind of strange yeah because we <laughs> Uh, this war isn't going uh, in the cities we should put our forces just in the fields for Russians to destroy it no it's like in every war you use the urban environment to protect your forces that is why we called for all civilians to leave um, to evacuate from the areas which are very close to the front lines but Amnesty International say that we put our own citizens under the threat of the backfire from Russian side and we use schools uh, for our soldiers basically my friends since the war, war had started uh, all the schools are closed were closed and are closed right now so basically they are just uh, the building yes there are schools but they're no uh, any kind of kids there we went for the online learning i know it myself because i have uh, the eight-year-old daughter who is studying online so i know that all the schools are closed now so basically those are the buildings that can be used uh, by our soldiers i think uh, hospitals is other story hospitals are working as it was uh, before and mostly they are now full of the injured uh, people so amnesty international i think it was just uh, paid quite a lot of funds because it's just a private organization uh, to make this kind of statement they also have the office in kiev but amnesty international office in kiev say that they 
are out of clue why their head office put this statement on their website because chief office of that organization was not involved in investigation of those cases so basically amnesty uh, stated <laughs> that on their own without any kind of investigations because they basically couldn't do it without uh, taking their Kiev office to the war side. Canada will send to Ukraine 225 their service members. They will not take part in fighting ongoing on the front lines. However, they will instruct our soldiers how to deal with Western made weapons. So basically, those are instructors my friends many thanks for supporting ukraine from all around the world now if you like this video press the like and also don't forget to check out the link for the atlas vpn in the video description just below this proposition is awesome i'm really proud to uh, deal with uh, that sponsorship that helps me to support ukrainian people my friends i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are have a great time